All right, diving in today, folks, we're tackling Warren Buffett, the Oracle of Omaha. The one and only. Exactly. We're going to break down his investing style, you know, how he thinks about giving back. And we've got a great source for this, the Oracle of Omaha, Warren Buffett's Wealth Wisdom. Fantastic book. Really gets into the mind of one of the most successful investors of all time. Okay, so Oracle of Omaha, why that nickname? You know, what makes him so prophetic? Well, for decades, he's had this almost uncanny ability to predict market trends. He picks companies that just... Well, win over the long haul. Like he sees something others don't. Exactly. He doesn't follow the Wall Street hype. His mm -hmm. philosophy is different. He's all about long-term value. So not those quick, risky trades. Nope. He finds companies with intrinsic value, ones that are maybe overlooked, even undervalued by others. And he holds on to them. Diamonds in the rough. You could say that. He's got a knack for spotting them. So how does he do that? What's he looking for specifically? He digs deep into a company's financials, that's for sure. Like balance sheets, all that. Oh, yeah. He examines their earnings, debt levels, everything to understand their financial health. So it's not just get feeling, it's research. Absolutely. He's incredibly thorough. He also looks for what he calls an economic moat. An economic moat. It's a metaphor. It basically means a company has some unique advantage that protects it from competition, keeps it profitable over time. So like a strong brand or a unique product. Precisely. Think about a company like Coca-Cola. Yeah. Everyone knows Coke. Exactly. That's a powerful economic moat. Yeah. But it's also about their distribution network, their global reach. It's not easy to replicate that. Okay. That makes sense. So he's looking for stability, long-term growth, and this economic moat. Mm -hmm. But the source emphasizes something else, the power of compounding. Yes. That's central to his philosophy. And he's all about the slow and steady approach, right? Absolutely. It's not about getting rich quick. It's about consistent growth over time. Think of it like this. Yeah. Give us an example. Let's say you invest $1,000, just 1000 and you get a decent return, say, 7% each year. 7%? That doesn't sound huge. No, but watch what happens. After that first year, you've earned $70, so now you've got 1070 Right? Right. But the next year, you're not just earning 7% on your original 1000 You're earning it on that 1070 Oh, so keep building. Exactly. And it snowballs over time. Keep yeah. that up. For 30 years, that same 7% return, your $1,000 grows to nearly 8000 Oh, okay. That's pretty powerful when you put it that way. Compounding is the magic of investing. That's what Buffett understands so well. And it's all about time, isn't it? Yeah. Which is fascinating because the source mentions Buffett bought his first stock at 11 years old. 11. Think about that. At 11, he already grasped these concepts. He wasn't playing around. He was already thinking long term. So it wasn't just kid stuff. He really understood it. It shows his mindset. Even back then, the power of investing, letting your money grow over time. He understood that time is on your side. The earlier you start, the more you benefit. And boy, did that pay off. Look at Berkshire Hathaway. This massive holding company owns huge chunks of Coca-Cola, Apple, you name it. Classic Buffett picks. I mean, those companies are huge. E. They are, but they fit his criteria perfectly. They're well-established brands, global reach. They consistently generate profits. And they've got that economic moat. You got it. Take Coca-Cola. They've been around for over a century. And people keep drinking Coke. Exactly. They adapt to changing tastes. They innovate. And Apple, they revolutionized technology multiple times. Loyal customer base. These companies are built to last. All right, but here's where things get really interesting. We're going beyond the balance sheet. Ah, yes. The philanthropic side of Warren Buffett. He's incredibly generous. The source highlights the giving pledge. The giving pledge is phenomenal. It was back in 2010. Buffett, along with Bill and Melinda Gates, started this movement. A movement? It's more than just a pledge. It's a call to action. They're challenging billionaires to commit to giving away the majority of their wealth to charity. So it's not just about signing a paper. It's about actually doing it. Exactly. And it's caught on. Over 200 of the world's wealthiest individuals and families have signed on. And they're from all over the world, 25 different countries. That's amazing. Yeah. And what kind of causes are they supporting? All sorts. We're talking about tackling global poverty, fighting disease, combating climate change, education, healthcare, you name it. It's about using wealth to make a difference. Exactly. And there's a quote from Buffett in the book that really sums it up. True wealth goes beyond the balance sheet. It's about giving back. 
powerful stuff. Mm. So what can our listeners take away from all of this? I think it challenges us to rethink our own definition of success. Sure, financial security is important, but true wealth, it's about the impact you have on the world. Whether it's donating, volunteering, just being kind. It's about leaving the world a little better than you found it. Exactly. And that brings us back to Buffett. He's built this incredible fortune, but he's not hoarding it. He's using it to make a difference. And he's inspiring others to do the same. Exactly. It's a powerful message. It really is. So to wrap things up, Buffett's approach is about patience, deep knowledge, and discipline, not just for building wealth, but for giving back. And that leaves me with one final thought for you, listener. If way you could ask Warren Buffett one question about investing OR, about giving back, what would it be? Something to ponder. Until next time, happy diving. <laughs>